I've always done theater. And I was doing a theater piece down on Vermont, a little 50-seat black box on Vermont called, I, what comes to mind is the limelight. I don't know if that's so. And somehow Ethel Winant, the great, brilliant Ethel Winant of fabled history, she was honored here at the Academy. Yes, and I was there for it because she, you know, really started my career, remembered seeing me in it. And I didn't have an agent, and I wasn't on anything. I was very new to the city. She said, I remember this girl that played Ava Braun as 18. That was one of my characters. And another character called Vida Fontaine, which is so interesting because I was doing a Tallulah Bankhead impression. And now, flash forward how many, four decades, and I'm playing Tallulah, you know, and headed f toward Broadway. It's so interesting in my life, now that I'm thinking about it. When, when you're living it, you're in the moment, and it just kind of rolls out. But when you start going back, archivally speaking, <laughs> it's very interesting. So I played these two characters. None, neither of them were like Rhoda. I was doing a German accent uh, uh, as this teenage Eva Braun talking about you know, how lo she loved German men with strength and, <laughs> I mean, it was all, a com it was a send-up of a stage reading. That's what it was, written by a wonderful fellow named C. Robert Holloway. And um, he acted as my agent because, and then he gave up agenting and moved to, to, to Honolulu or to Hawaii and was no longer involved. So I was just there on the show, I, I got the show, because Ethel had seen me and called me in. It was great. It was the most wonderful audition process I've ever been through. And it's interesting because in the, um, I, don't, I don't smoke and I still don't. And I play all these smoking women. I, spoke, I played Golda Meir, who was never without a cigarette. And now I'm playing Tallulah Bankhead in another stage presentation. And she smoked constantly. But I, so I, I figured a way to fake uh, an inhale. You just raise your chest and pretend, to, because if I inhale, I'll cough and the play will be down. Anyway, you asked about that. I sweated out cigarette commercials, called back five, six times, and then never got it, because I wasn't really smoking. Um, smart of them not to cast me. Um, but, and there were little small things that were just money jobs, Jim, that you wanted to get, because you were trying to not go on unemployment and pay your rent in New York, that were more harrowing than this most important audition of my life, which was almost like a lead pipe cinch. I mean, it was incredible. I went in and I decided with Tony, oh, I've been with Tony for 25 years, going on 30. You gotta forgive me. I, Dick and I worked, as I said, on our boat. Uh, we had a we, we co boat. We didn't own it alone. We had co. I think there were three couples that owned the boat. Arlene Galanka was one of them. So it was a a, a shared thing, um, and and of course in the living room at home we moved furniture and he helped me coached me. Um, I decided to learn the lines, which you would never do in theater in a million years. You 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 hold your sides and you act but you never want them to think that you have arrived at a performance. But I thought, this will show them that I'm a quick study, which I am not, <laughs> and wasn't then, and still, well, now I've gotten better. Uh, but I thought, maybe it'll be impressive that I, and then I can use props. And that opening scene of Mary where I'm wiping the windows, I actually took a, I had a car coat, and I brought a bucket. Why did I bring the bucket? Oh, to show that there was water, but I didn't have water in it. I just pretended there was water, and in my best story theater manner, I was able to have the weight and do that, and then start wiping the window like this. And then they say, come in. And then I ah, lifted the thing. You know, it was all imaginary, except I did have a car coat with a semblance of props. But I brought the bucket. Tony said, bring the there it goes again. Dick said, bring the bucket, Val, because you'd be able to unload the rag. You know what I mean? You don't want to be stuck with a prop that you don't want. So, and, and also coming through the window, it'll be good that you can lift the air. In other words, we blended um, fake f water, you know. So then I, act, I came through the space window, and then, you know, it was warm in there, and I closed the window, and then I was able to get rid of that. And then I was just there in a car coat, which was right, because she wouldn't have been out there in the cold washing. And then, you know, 
Hello, I'm Mary Richards. Hello, I'm Rhoda Morgan Stern. Get out of my apartment. And they were laughing. I mean, it was a good audition. But, you know, I didn't know. And they said, oh, that was great. And they were very warm, very sweet. I remember my first contact was Pat Nardo, who went on to become a com comedy writer. She was Jim Brooks's secretary. Beautiful, redheaded girl, uh, sitting at the front desk, very warm and dear. And I sat down and, you know, um, then I went in and did my little bit, and they thought it was terrific, I guess. I, I mean, you'd have to talk to Jay and the others. But it was Jay Sandrich, and it was uh, Alan and, and Jim, Alan Burns, Jim Brooks, and I think Dave Davis, I think. And then they said, well, we, they, they called me and said, we'd like you to come back and read with Mary. Again, it was another audition, but I'd been auditioning for ages. And, you know, I was well. I was you know, 28, 29. I'd been auditioning since I was 17, 18. So it was, you do your best, um, but you, you don't put a lot of stock in it. So I went in, and there she was, and she was so adorable. And I... She had a little cap. She, she had a white little Courage-like cap because she'd been at a ballet dance and a lavender or, um, I remember, uh, a pale, pinkish, cre Halenka turtleneck where they had zippers. And it was when, you know, those days, and white pants. And I looked at her and I thought, my God, you look so great in white trousers with no overblouse. <laughs> she just looked great. And we sat and uh, when, she was so warm and so dear. And we read together, you know. That time I used the paper because we had different scenes and stuff. And um, I drove home, which wasn't far from the, uh, Las Palmas is where the studio was and the audition, Las Palmas and Melrose. And I lived in West Hollywood on a street called Westmount, which was right near Melrose and La Cienega, two blocks in. So you can... For, for those not Californians, they don't know, but it was a short drive. And as I drove up in my little, I think it was a Volkswagen, um, there was Dick on the front porch. You got it, you got it. I said, oh, get in the house. They have to do a screen test. This is Hollywood. They're not just going to take me from sitting, seeing me sit with Mary for a minute. And he said, no, 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 you got it. They just called. You got the part. So it was the easiest, most pleasant audition process that I ever went through with this extraordinary outcome. It was the wind in the sails of my entire career to this moment. So isn't that funny?